So what we're here to talk about is uh, LandCV, is the project that I'm working on. And the, and the title here is Lightweight but Billion Scale Vector Search for uh, Multimodal AI. Um, so you know, very briefly about myself, I'm the CEO and co-founder of LandCV. Uh, I've been making these uh, tools for data scientists and machine learning uh, engineers for almost two decades. Uh, once upon a time, I was one of the original co-authors of the Pandas library. And I've been doing um, sort of similar having similar roles since then. Uh, most recently, I was VP of engineering at 2B TV, uh, a streaming company where I focus a lot on ML ops and recommender systems. And it was there that uh, sort of got me uh, started on creating Lance Format and Lance CV, uh, basically uh, by seeing all the pain points that ML engineers had to go through to deal with managing all of the unstructured data that we had from, you know, embeddings to um, video and, and uh, image assets and text and, and metadata and all of that together. Um, so, uh, what is what what is LandCB and what what are we solving for? So, um, you know, I think almost everyone in the whole world who has internet access has access has used ChatGPT at some at this point in time. Right, and we've just barely passed um, the one one year uh, birthday for ChatGPT. Now, one of the things that people have noticed with LLMs in general uh, is that you know its knowledge is uh, limited, right, to what you feed into it. So then the problem is hallucination when you ask questions about uh, things that it doesn't know it doesn't know about. It tends to make up answers. So, and this is where RAG comes in, uh, or retrieval augmented generation. So, if you can uh, you can think of RAG as like, you know, an open book test where you know you it, you go in to take the test, but you're allowed to have a reference book with you, and you can just find the answers. And this is a way to uh, essentially reduce or eliminate hallucinations and extend the knowledge of LLMs. Um, so. You know, as folks build these applications, we realize that retrieval is absolutely critical for AI data. But um, out of all the choices that we have today with vector databases uh, that power this such retrieval, it's actually kind of hard to figure out which one you should use. In general, um, at least from, from our users, you know, when, as they're evaluating, they say that it's hard to find a vector database until they come to LandCV that has the rich features that they need and it scales to production at a reasonable price. So uh, if you think about all the choices today, vector databases in general cost a lot and um, is more complicated to run. And it lacks a lot of the data management features that we're um, familiar with already from traditional databases. On the other hand, there are a lot of traditional databases that have added vector indices uh, but the problem there is we have limited scalability and there are often no advanced retrieval options. So depending on your use case and as you scale up, what a lot of our users are finding is that they have to hop from one option to the other. And it's uh, it, it really kind of is too complicated or too costly, right? So your your use cases can change very quickly because, you know, AI is... is uh, developing very rapidly and it's very exciting, but uh, your data infrastructure should not because it's just really expensive to switch data infrastructure. So uh, we'll talk about LandCB, how that how we solve these problems, and we'll talk a little bit about the Lands columnar format uh, that powers LandCB under the hood and that makes it special. And then um, we'll we'll go through a couple of demos to to show you what uh, LandCB is capable of. And then we'll finish up with what we're working on um, down the road. Now, LandCB is an open source, in-process vector database. Uh, and we think that it gives the, the best of both vector databases and traditional databases. What in-process means is that it runs in the same process as your application. It's an, or another word for it is an embedded database where it, um, you don't need to spin up another server or worry about operations and connecting to it. Uh, it's like SQLite or DuckDB. Right? LandCB is written with a Rust core 
and has Python and TypeScript bindings. And there's lots of handcrafted uh, SIMD code for just absolute uh, crazy performance. And um, it's super scalable. It's very cost effective. Uh, and it is built natively with multimodal data management, meaning images, videos, text, so on and so forth in mind. Uh, so I alluded to this when we talked about in process, right? So uh, LandCB is incredibly lightweight, so you can install it in seconds, and it runs in process. If you're familiar with SQLite or DuckDB, LandCB is essentially SQLite or DuckDB for vector search. But don't let the lightweight package fool you. It's incredibly scalable. Um, because everything runs on disk and has all the sim uh, optimizations I talked about, on just a single node, even on my laptop, you can get to a billion vectors uh, without breaking a sweat. And we've added GPU acceleration for indexing to speed that up at scale. Um, and it's the only option that offers separation of compute and storage. And we'll see why that matters in a little bit. LandCB is also really full featured. Um, you know, it's a it's a open source vector database that delivers um, both like hybrid vector and um, full text searches, metadata filtering, SQL. And what a lot of our users find really awesome about LandCB is that we have a very native level integration into the tools that you're familiar with in Python, like Pandas and Polars and DuckDB, um, and even into like uh, Spark or, or Slurm if you're coming from an academic lab. Um, on, on the other hand, uh, LandCB, unlike other vector databases, comes with um, a lot of the, the features for data management that you would expect from a traditional database. So you can have arbitrary number of vector columns, arbitrary metadata columns that you can search through, um, can, you know, concurrent writes, uh, lightweight transactions, and very scalable reads with, with some individual consistency. Right? And so um, before, before we get into what uh, powers LandCB under the hood. Um, I can we can um, just show you a little bit about what LandCB can do. So let me just share a, a separate screen here. Um, so what's interesting? What's interesting here is a um, I'll call it a multimodal search application. So as you can see from this notebook, um, let me just yeah there we go. Uh, yeah this should be okay. Uh, I'm just importing LandCB and I'm connecting to my local uh, directory here. And what we're going to do today is actually just look through the um, Oxford PEP data set, which has got uh, a bunch of really cute cats and dogs, and we're gonna search through them using, using vectors, right? So um, what we're gonna do is say, use the open clip multimodal uh, model here to do the vectorization. And uh, of course, we can use MPS because I'm running on a, a MacBook. Um, and it's pretty easy to declare the schema here uh, using pedantic. You can say there's a vector column, there's species as the metadata, and then there's a URL for that image. Um, and we're going to open that table, and we can just basically see, I can say table.search, uh, a French bulldog, and I can show the three most similar um, the images. And indeed, the first one comes uh, with a, a cute little French bulldog here. What, what's really cool about LandCB is that because of the integration that we have with Arrow and, and the Python ecosystem, we can actually search directly uh, with, with the image. So I've got this picture of really cute uh, baby sommeliers here. And uh, what we can do is feed that query image right, this, this query image variable here um, into the search. So I can say table.search um, and then show me the top three and then just display the, the first one. So indeed, we get a pretty similar looking fluffy little doc here. Uh, what's, re what's really interesting about LandCB here, unlike other vector databases, is it's built with production in mind. So what that means is Every operation that you do with updates and so on and so forth, it's tracked, um, and it's uh, you can have instant rollback and have uh, uh, time travel. So, for example, if I accidentally deleted all of, um, let's say I deleted all of the cats in this data set, 
right? So if I look at the, the status set in this stage, everything everything's kind of a dog. What I can do is actually say, okay, just give me back. I, I don't want to delete all the cats. I want the cats back. You know, just give me back to the previous version, restore it. And now I've got both cats and dogs back um, uh, again. Um, and then uh, one last thing I wanted to show here is the, uh, I mentioned scale, right? So I had a screenshot, but I, I just wanted to make that a little bit real. Um, and um, hopefully Airmeet, uh, Airmeet's not going to let me share a separate screen here. Um, okay, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, actually. <laughs> oh, I, I know, I know I can do this. All right, should be pretty easy. All right, so we can go back to the, the notebook, actually. Um, and uh, so if you'll bear with me. So I've got LandCB here, and um, there's a table uh, called test1b. Right, and if I if we look at the table, this thing has um, what is it? One, you know, one billion vectors in it. And so um, what I'm going to do is just say time um, uh, table dot search. I need to import numpy, and then um, table dot search. I'm going to generate a random vector just to. Sh to um, Show the search here, and then limit three to error. Um, yeah, so I've got this thing here, and, and so what I can do is show the timing here, uh, and it's going to run it in a loop. And you can see um, within a few milliseconds, right, for each search on a billion vectors on just my MacBook, uh, I'm able to run that search. And so what this means is that if you've, you know, maybe uh, for your earlier uh, experimentation, you don't have that many vectors, but scale really sk sneaks up on you. So in production, it's very easy to say, hey, I'm going to try out a couple of different chunking strategies. And all of a sudden, I've got like 10 times the, the vectors I was expecting before. Right. So um, uh, a lot of other vector databases as they scale becomes very expensive. Uh, you know, LandCB, of, of course, like it's, you know, it's open source. Um, so the, it, it reduces the cost, but it, even in terms of infrastructure, it's an order of magnitude cheaper to actually operate uh, the, uh, the LandCB uh, installation in, in production. Um, okay, so let me take a pause. So we got a question in chat here. Uh, looks like it's a, where were the embeddings being calculated when you input a text or image query? That is a that's a great question, um, and, I, and I think I like ran through that a little bit too quickly here. Um, so if you look at the so what we can do is when we look at the table, uh, LandCB comes with an embedding function registry, and so here for this table because we're doing text and image search. We're saying uh, get the open clip model out of that registry. Now this registry is is um, extensible, so you can write your own, you can add, add your own, and then what we're going to do with this model is configure that into the table schema. So it's very uh, since we have access to Python here, we can use Pydantic to make it super easy to declare the data model that we're working with. So you have a vector that's your embedding, and then I can use the model to say, hey, this is my vector field. And then this vector has uh, the same number of dimensions as my model. And then um, I'm going to say, so, you know, for, for the clip model, because I'm encoding the, the um, images, I can say, hey, this, U, this URI string column is the source data for that field. So when I, add, um, when I add data into it for this table, I only have to add the image column or the, the URI column. I don't have to worry about the vectors. And then when I search on it, I can I can just add a uh, text or the image, and depending on whether the input is a text or a string or a, a pill image, uh, the LandCB table figures out um, how to interact with the model under the hood, so that you don't even have to worry about the 
the embedding process at all. Um, cool. Yeah, hope that, that answered the question. All right, cool. Um, all right, let's get back to the presentation a little bit. And um, I guess we won't have too much time to go through the uh, Lance format. So I might speed through some of these slides. Happy to take more time to an answer any questions. Um, so uh, what I think is the secret sauce behind Lance CB is what we call Lance columnar format. And um, this is a new columnar format, kind of like Parquet and Orc. But it's a uh, special. It's a format that's specially optimized for AI data, um, and generally that means you know images, video, point clouds, vectors, and so on and so forth. So um, it's it's columnar format, so it's fast for scans, like with traditional BI queries and analytics queries. But what we found before we started designing this this columnar format was for a lot of AI and machine learning need, uh, workflows. We need faster random access uh, for shuffling, for sampling, debugging, e evals, uh, in, and of course, vector search. And Parquet and Orc are designed, um, are not designed to deliver fast random access. And, and what Lance does is because it lays out the data differently and has a different um, scanner, it's able to deliver uh, 100x performance for those types of AI workloads that critically depend on fast random access. And uh, what's most interesting about Lance is that it's both a file format, kind of like Parquet, that, uh, and it's also a table format. So you can think of it like a lightweight um, you know, iceberg or delta for AI data. So that gives us lightweight transactions. Uh, it gives us the secondary indices, which powers the vector database. Uh, on top of those lands files, and it gives us like versioning and and rollbacks and, and time travel and things like that. So, um, if you think about like lands as a format, it's it's an on disk format like Parquet. Um, the main interface is Apache Arrow, and that's the in memory representation of the data. Right, and at the compute layer, uh, it's well integrated into data frame SQL engines, and of course, Lance CB, the vector database. Right. And so uh, and the, the main reason why uh, we chose Arrow uh, as a standard here is because it's much easier to integrate into the, the ecosystem. So you know by integrating with Arrow, uh, we, we all of a sudden uh, make it make Lance format able to be accessed by you know pandas and polars and DuckDB and all of the Python ecosystem. And of course, migration is very easy. Conversion is literally two lines of code. One to read it into, into Arrow, one to write it into Lance format. Um, in general, uh, Lance format is used in a couple of different um, buckets, right? So large scale data mining for autonomous vehicles, for example, uh, generative AI training data lake. So we've got users that have uh, converted petabytes of image data for training, debugging, and vector search, obviously. And then uh, semantic search for LLMs, Rexes, and generative AI, um, and where we deliver single node low latency vector search. Um, so one of the things that we sort of took took a look at is, you know, recently there was a um, paper from you know, Andy Pablo at CMU and Owen West McKinney on the performance of Parquet and Orc uh, for. Uh, vector search and ML workloads. So we replicated some of those benchmarks, and we can show you here that you know uh, on both uh, SSD and on S3, Lance drastically outperforms our the existing formats. So something that you can, if you compare to Parquet, if you're um, if you're familiar with that, right? Lance is basically a single digit milliseconds here to just fetch fetch the fetch the vector search results, whereas Parquet takes you know close to a second. Um, the situation is reversed between Parquet and Orc on S3, but Lance remains very, very uh, performant. So um, I'll take just about two minutes to talk, uh, just mention the things that makes Lance different. So, um, you know, the binary encoder in Lance lays out the data differently from Parquet. 
So in Parquet, if you have a, a string like this, the offsets and the and the data are interleaved. So you have you know offset data, offset data. So that's why you're not able to actually uh, get faster random access. But with uh, Lance, we actually store the offsets separately from the data, so that you can have constant uh, constant offset read and then a constant data read. The uh, I.O., the scanner is also very different, and it's optimized for large blob data. Um, in particular, uh, if you have a query like this, like select from, you know, with some filters and limit offset, the traditional on the left, you see the traditional I.O. plan for an OLAP type of query, where, you know, at the bottom is where you read out all of the columns from the select and the where, and then you go through the rest of that query. So the, the problem is if you're fetching like LiDAR cloud data, each cl LiDAR cloud can be you know, up to like 100 megabytes or something. So you're wasting a lot of IO on that initial scan because you're going to filter it later. So instead here we do late materialization. And um, what we do is only, only fetch the predicate columns, the filter columns. And then we, we do the fetch for the projection at the very end in the take. And of course, this requires fast random access to, to actually make sense. Um, and then uh, Lance also gives us zero copy schema evolution so that, you know, kind of like Iceberg and Parquet, uh, what you can do is you can add rows and add columns after the data set has been written. And of course, you can roll back to previous versions and you don't have to copy that data, right? This matters a lot, uh, especially for ML data. If you have like a petabyte of images, and you want to do some experiments and add some features, you don't want to have to copy the whole data set just to add a, a new column, right? Um, um, yeah, so the last thing I'll mention here before I open up uh, for questions is, um, you know, it, it turns out that the uh, random access performance of, um, of Lance format is, makes it a great fit for adding in secondary indices, in this case, a vector index, so that we can have a vector index that's written on disk that points to certain rows um, in the, the, the corresponding rows in the data set. And we can fetch that really, really, really quickly. Um, and so this is, this is what gives LANCB the flexibility and also the scalability. It's all powered by uh, the design of LANS format. All right. So, Lance is essentially what we call this open platform for machine learning and AI to build on. Um, so, you know, from uh, ETL and updates to analytics, model training, and vector search uh, can all have a single source of truth. Right? We're working on some really awesome things. Uh, partition pruning and scalar indices are, are already done and, and just shipped. We're going to be writing some more docs and uh, uh, blog posts about that. And there's a lot of exciting work, especially uh, number three and advanced encodings. So there are um, recent work by like uh, various uh, research labs, like the Bitter Blocks paper and Priscilla paper from Google, um, all with some very interesting things that we're going to in um, incorporate and maybe collaborate with uh, those groups. Um, but yeah, so um, I think this is, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave a few minutes for questions. Uh, please check us out if you're building generative AI applications or managing multimodal data at scale. So our open source uh, repo, our open source org LANCB has three main repos that you should pay attention to. For examples, you can go to vectordb-recipes. For the format, it's just LANCB slash LANCE. And then the open source vector database is LANCB slash LANCB. Um, and uh, feel free to email us at contact at landcb.com. We're working on a cloud version uh, if you're interested in hosting it for, for production. Cool. Um, yeah, the, sped through the second half of that talk a little bit, but I wanted to leave a few minutes for questions. Um, cool. So how would it work for BioML such protein characterized class? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. So uh, we're working on sort of generic support for different data types at, for vector representations. Um, so I think for bio ML, like the thing that's um, 
missing right now uh, is support for uh, like Boolean vectors uh, or like it, it real int eight vectors. So you can certainly encode um, protein structures or or um, you know, these bit vectors as like uh, float float sixteen or something like that, and you can calculate cosine distance just fine. So at some at small scale, this already works just fine. Um, at, I think at larger scale, the um, the storage uh, starts to matter a little bit. So we'll be looking to add support for those. And then um, if you're working with like Boolean vectors, then you may want to use you may end up wanting wanting to use like Jacquard distance instead of like cosine or something like that. Um, but cosine should be should work uh, okay, I think. Okay, um, hope that answers the question. Uh, next one, if you need to embed a, uh, a billion vectors, you'd want to parallelize that. How would you then index those into, right? Yeah, so um, I think uh, there's, there's a couple of strategies. So the one that we've been working on is actually just to make it really fast, which uh, and that uses the GPU. Um, so we're, uh, we've, we've shipped a bunch of GPU acceleration for indexing, and then there's, a, uh, there's some more that are coming. Um, so uh, I think for, like, for a billion vectors, uh, you should be able to get to like an acceptable time uh, on just a single GPU machine. I think that's, in general, easier to manage than um, like having a distributed system. But that's also kind of in the works. OK, can you host LAN CV on your own Kubernetes or a VM environment on-prem? If so, what are the requirements? Right, yeah, yeah. The, this is totally possible. Um, and it's actually very easy to do. So um, the it's, it's kind of like if you were writing an application and you wanted to use SQLite or something like that to interact with data. Uh, so in general, there's a couple of uh, so LandCB interfaces with tons of storage uh, technologies. So we can talk to S3 directly. We can talk to like a mounted drive like EFS or EBS. So you have a bunch of options. So if you're not super latency sensitive but you're cost sensitive, you can store the data directly on S3, and you can just uh, you know, run Lance TV in your application, interact with S3 directly. If you're super latency sensitive, but not super cost sensitive, uh, you can store data on like EBS volume. And then in Kubernetes, you can have like reader and writer pods on the same host and just talking to that same uh, the EBS volume for, for, 